As it has been brought to the public's attention in recent decades, the effects of climate change have detrimental consequences on the ecosystems and environments located in colder northern regions. The warming of the earth is causing ice cover and glaciers to melt in the Arctic, and this is changing the composition of many aquatic ecosystems in those areas. The changes that have occurred in Bylot Lake and Wardham Lake throughout the past century give the public an idea of how climate change is affecting and will continue to affect these vulnerable systems. The first Arctic ecosystem is Lake Bylot, zone QB15 in Nunavut, Canada. And this lake is located in a protected basin with southern exposure with a considerably deep and dilute volume of water. It contains a low pH, is susceptible to stratification, and is oligotrophic. And because of these features, it is very vulnerable to climate change. To observe the effects of climate change on this lake, a sample of sediment core was extracted from the lake to determine biomarkers such as diatoms to give an indication of the history. Radiocarbon dating suggests that the lowermost sediments examined were deposited approximately 1,000 years ago in 1900. The results of the sediment examination revealed that planktonic organisms have been present in QB15 since this time, but at much lower abundances than more recent sediments. And diatom abundances were quite elevated and steady during this time. According to the timeline suggested by the sediment composition, planktonic abundances increased from 1980 to 2008, and the specific planktonic species produced significant results. It is known as Cytotelostalagera, and it is previously shown to be associated with reduced ice cover and stratification regimes. It was identified in the sediment of QB15 with very few present in earlier parts of the record. However, the abundance significantly increased in more recent parts. The evidence extracted from the sediment involving the increase in planktonic diatoms around 1900 may be attributable to increasing atmospheric temperatures causing longer ice-free periods and causing the lake to be considerably dilute. Longer ice-free periods allow species to thrive for extended periods of time, and increasing global temperatures are only expected to amplify the changes that have already been seen at the QB15 site at Bylot Lake. This includes the increasing of diatom and planktonic assemblages that have been occurring for approximately the past 40 years, which is likely to continue due to the progression of climate change. Areas of the lake that are more acidic, oligotrophic, and dilute are expected to experience more pronounced changes in species assemblages because those features are more vulnerable to the effects of climate change. Another Arctic lake with a different morphology and balance that has already experienced the effects of climate change is Ward Hunt Lake in Nunavut, Ontario. This lake is small, shallow, ultra-oligotrophic, and is located in one of the most ice-covered regions in the Northern Hemisphere, and it's an epi-shelf lake surrounded by the Ward Hunt Ice Shelf. It also experiences 100% ice cover for 9 out of 12 months of the year, and because this lake is the northernmost lake in Canada, it is vulnerable to climate change, and changes that occur in this lake represents the severity of ice and climate conditions. An interesting feature of this lake is that it contains cyanobacterial mats on top of the sediments in the shallow littoral zone. And when a sediment sample was extracted to identify a timeline of lake activity, it appeared that there was low organic matter present in most of the record, but there was a significant increase in the upper centimeter of the sediment. Only two diatome taxa were identified, and there was a significant increase in the abundances of these diatomes, which were only present in the upper 2.5 centimeters, with even more in the upper 1.5 centimeters. Another important change that occurred around the 2.5 centimeter depth of the sediment was a sharp increase in chlorophyll and beta carotene concentrations. This indicates that there was a recent increase in productivity in Warhead Lake. The complete absence of diatoms before the 2.5 cm mark indicates that the lake may have been completely frozen all year long before this point, and the increase of global temperatures due to climate change may have caused the lake to experience reduced ice cover, allowing for species to thrive. A very intriguing observation obtained from the sediment sample was the sudden and overwhelming abundance of diatoms that had no previous traces in the sediment. This indicates how susceptible Ward Hub Lake is to climate change. The period of relative stability throughout most of the sediment core before the presence of diatom and pigment shifts 
suggests that Wardhout Lake's aquatic composition and ecosystems have been affected more by climate change during the last two centuries than at any point during the last eight millennia. Increased levels of beta carotene and chlorophyll, as well as increased abundances of diatoms, is expected for Wardhout Lake due to longer ice-free periods from increasing global temperatures. Unfortunately, another consequence of climate change that may occur to Wardhout Lake because it is an epishelf lake is the melting of the Wardhout ice shelf surrounding it, which may impact the drainage and even the future existence of the lake. The two lakes covered in this segment have different features, however, it appears that recent climate change has been affecting them in very similar ways, from reduced ice cover to increased productivity to increased abundances of diatoms. Increased aquatic productivity may be viewed as a positive thing, but it is still an effect of an increasingly warming planet, and the reduced ice cover caused by increasing temperatures can have detrimental effects on terrestrial populations.